Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today we're diving into the upcoming crowdfunding campaigns for April. We don't have a ton of games to go through. I mean, we do have like 20, 25 games to go over. I'm sure a lot will be added, but some of the ones we do have are absolutely heavy hitters. I've been on a generally good uh, good note so far as far as backing fewer games, but April is going to have a bunch of campaigns I'm backing. But before we dive into that, the usual reminder, make sure to subscribe to Shelf Cloud if you want to stay up to date with the most recent information. There are a lot of crowdfunding campaigns that pop up, that change, the dates adjust. There are campaigns I'm talking about this month that I talked about last month because they got pushed off. There are campaigns that will be added, adjusted, there's a whole bunch of information constantly available and all of that. And to that end, Shelf Clutter puts out a video every single week. Every single Sunday, there's a full video covering the campaigns covering that coming that week. If you want the most updated information, I highly recommend watching his videos just for additions, for changes, for all that stuff. Plus, he talks about a lot of games that I don't always cover. I'm trying to fit a whole lot of stuff into a single month, which means some smaller games make the may, uh, are cut. And in his videos, everything makes the cut. I got stumbled up on the word cut there for a second. But with that, before we dive into the actual games, before we dive into all the, the games of the month, starting off with our, our sponsor. Our sponsor, WSBG, the Rural Series of Board Gaming, is sponsoring this video, and the Rural Series of Board Gaming is going to be, it's going to be five days, September 24th to 28th, at the Horseshoe, Ca Horseshoe Casino, previously Bally's, in Vegas. And if you haven't heard me talk about it before, it's basically a, a convention, but a convention with, that also has a focus on tournament play, very well-mannered, good-spirited tournament play. You're going to be competing in these 16 games. You have Terraforming Mars, Guy Project, Azul, Ra, Ticket to Ride, I'm not going to read them all, you can see them on the list, we have Great Western Trail, Cascadia, Patchwork, Brass Birmingham, 16 different days to compete over, $40,000 in prizes, and they're going to have a bunch of ring events as well, so they have these outer ring events, in addition to the main ring events, they have all these outer ring events, additional ways to compete and play across the variety of days, so you always have something to keep yourself busy, that's in addition to the Dice Tower library that they're going to have there, the whole Dice Tower West library is going to be the library at WSBG, so you have access to all of that, an absolute ton of games, and if, if you make sure to use my, my my code down below, there'll be a code in the description down below. If you use that, you'll save $40 off the four ring game pass uh, press over here. Possibly other options too, but I know for sure off this one as well. But you're going to get that four ring game pass, the best value, all of that includes a whole bunch of things. You can also buy a guest pass. So if you get like, a, you know, a, a, you get a room with two beds or whatnot, and you can throw on a guest pass for a friend for $100, and you both of you can go have fun. Lots of options here. This was a ton of fun. I had a lot of fun going to this event. I'll be there again this year. I might be two days late because of a conflict, but I will be at the event for the remaining three days, trying to get as much fun out of it as I possibly can. Uh, this is WSBG, the sponsor of today's video. And from there, let's start off with the campaign, starting off with Vita. These first few are going to be a bunch of April 11th, April 4th launches. Uh, Vita is going to be a deck building game for two to four players in which you build a deck slowly but surely as you play, try to be mindful of the weather and trying to be placing car tiles down or cars down in order to be placing the correct tokens down on the weather, basically a back and forth timing game, almost across of deck building with almost a little bit of a Zul adjacency in Vitor, a board game inspired by Icelandic weather. Over here we have Terminus from Inside Up Games. I don't have a lot of information about this game. This is going to be another April 4th launch. This is coming from Inside Up Games, who've had a bunch of fantastic games, some that have worked for me, some that have not, but overall some very solid games. They just had Earth. Earth was their, their major hit that everyone can't stop talking about. And Terminus is going to be a, a subway building and resource management game for two to five players. I don't have more information on it yet, but I'm sure we'll be seeing more more information because, well, you know, it's in four days, basically. And then we have Nova Roma from Half a Kingdom Games, another a another April 4th launch. This is coming from Stan Kordonsky, and this is going to be a midweight Euro game for one to four players with a solid solo mode as well, and it's a game that you're going to be trying to uh, effectively put down tokens into a grid and taking various actions as case cascade off one another. So actions of different strength depending on the rows and columns. So it's a bit of a, a action puzzle of you have eight different actions you're trying to be mindful of as you combine them all into ultimately building out your ideal Roman Empire in this game. From there we have another April 4th campaign, a Project L reprint and expansion. This is coming from Boardcubator who they had, uh, you know, they had their campaign over on GameFound, Kingdom Come Deliverance that unfortunately cancelled and the company looked like it was closing but I, I don't know what they did. Maybe they sold off some titles. I don't know what, I don't know what or how, but Boardcubator is back over on Kickstarter. Project L launching April 4th. Make sure to check that out. Project L's fantastic game. Uh, it says new expansion as well, so I'm curious what that's what, how that's going to be, as well as how it's going to integrate with the big box that they already, you know, sold and all that. I'm very curious, but Project L's a fantastic game. I really enjoy it, and it's coming back to, uh, well, Kickstarter. Then we have Mindbug Beyond. This is going to be the last April 4th title, Mindbug Beyond. Already 3,000 people following it. This is going to be the next follow-up to Mindbug. 
Mind Bug is basically a two-player game that gives you that kind of uh, collectible trading card head-to-head -head game, but with a keep creaking as pack. And the whole appeal of the game is the idea of the Mind Bug, that twice in the game, you can go ahead and use your Mind Bug to steal your opponent's move. So whenever I make a move, I'm doing so with the mindfulness that you can at any point take that move away from me. And so there's this is kind of pacing out. Do you play your early attack fast and early because you, your opponent's going to be holding on to the Mind Bug and hopefully won't counter you because they're expecting heavier hitters? Or do you actually hold off, trying to tempt them out with like a, a dangerous move but not the most dangerous in order to ultimately take them down. It's a head-to-head -head game. I've played it a few times. Uh, that's Mind Bug. You can check that out. We have Beyond Evolution and Beyond Eternity uh, coming to crowdfunding Kickstarter. Then we have Zombicide White Death. This is going to be launching April 5th. Uh, they going to be launching April 5th, Zombicide White Death, uh, the next follow-up to the Zombicide series, which is going to be another. This, it's Medieval Zombicide with animals as your companions, which is a whole bunch of fun things going on here. I'm very intrigued by this one, but also hesitant. As a huge Zombicide fan myself, I am both incredibly interested, well, almost certainly go all in and also I'm like do I really need more medieval zombicide I'm loving Wild West I'm lo loving Undead or Alive I love Marvel Zombies I like Black Plague but how many different versions of the same thing do you possibly need in your collection and the answer is just one more just one more no more after that after that we're fine I'll ignore the pirate zombicide I'll ignore the ninja zombicide we'll just focus on zombicide white death we're good we're cool it's all good here I don't know what I'm gonna do I really don't know what I'm going to do. I just can't justify having all the Zombicide. Now, the good news is I can condense an entire all-in of any Kamon game into a single Kallax Cubby. I can do that. But that's still one Kallax Cubby per Kamon game, and they put out like three or four games per year. I can't have them all. I have Massive Darkness showing up at my house soon. I don't know exactly when. I still haven't really properly condensed them, put away Massive... Sorry, uh, I mean, Master of the Universe will be doing that. And the Massive Darkness, I still haven't properly put away. So I need to... I need to get on top of my game and back fewer games, but that we'll start that tomorrow, not not Zombicide White Death. April 6th, we'll, we'll have, start having shelf control. Actually, April 11th is going to have Santorini Co-op and Deluxe Panthe expansion, so ignore what I said about the whole uh, shelf control starting April 6th. A April 12th. April 12th, we'll start with the shelf control. We should be fine from there. We'd have, never mind, Endeavor Deep Sea is April 25th. April 26th. April 26th is when I stop backing games for, like, at least two days. We have Santorini Co-op Deluxe Pantheon expansion coming April 11th. It's going to be a deluxified version of Santorini, which is, like, just adding a little bit further extra deluxifications, that little uh, board section you can see over there, plus a co-op and or solo expansion. I don't know if it's solo, but definitely a co-op expansion. Uh, so check that out. That's going to be Santorini. We'll, we'll see more information about that soon. They have a great video already. That's going to be launching April 11th. We have Roll With It Fantasy Box set. This was previously like a print and play role, right? That they're doing a full on box set with it. Uh, but this is going to be Roll It box set from Humble Board Games launching April 11th. Then we have Dungeons and Lasers 5, World of. Deuce 5e. This is coming from Arkan Games, Arkan Studio, bringing you more Dungeons and Lasers. They have their two, like, they have their two arms. They have their board games. The most recent one was Heroes of Might and Magic. But then they also have their, like, a whole terrain systems and all of that, terrains, miniatures, and all that. And this is more in that category, which means I will look at it. I will think it's all pretty. I will want it all. And that one I actually will have shelf control on because I just spent all my money on Zombicide White Death and I don't have any money left. From there, we have Fracture Sky launching on April 11th as well. This is coming to you from Ivy Studios, Ivy Games. Fracture Sky is going to be a head to head. Well, head to head it's like a you know two to five player game i think there's a solo mode too there's a solo mode a one to five player game uh, of area control as you place down your airships into some different locations trying to be mindful of hiding the strength the value of the airships from your opponents to outplay them there's already a gameplay up over there's actually a few gameplays up over on iv games the youtube channel crackle is a gameplay there'll be more content coming i'll have a review coming shortly that's going to be fractured sky april 11th on kickstarter we have Thorgle the Board Game from Portal Games launching on GameFound April 11th as well. This is one that I don't know nearly enough about. I know it's based on Thorgle, the IP, which means nothing to me. I don't know anything about that. But it's going to be a cooperative storybook adventure game for one to four players. It looks cool. looks interesting. Coming from Portal Games. Uh, past that, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I mean, I don't know the gameplay, anything else. But it's going to be Thorgle launching April 11th. And yes, I know for the inevitable comment that I'll get a few of these. Yes, Robinson Crusoe is delayed. If you are a Robinson Crusoe backer or if you're not a Robinson Crusoe backer, their last campaign is fairly delayed, uh, looking like it's going to be a quarter two or quarter three uh, arrival as far as things go, but it is fairly delayed. Take a look at that. Uh, por uh, por uh, Portal in general have had a bunch of crowdfunding campaigns, and Robinson is by far their most outstanding one. Usually they, they deliver a lot quicker, but just back responsibly, back with the knowledge of what's out there and any and all delays and all those things. I'm not personally worried about it. I'm mentioning it only because I know I'll have at least four people who said, why don't you talk about Robinson? So I am. I am talking about Robinson back responsibly. That's going to be Thor with the board game coming on GameFound. Then we have They Live the Card Game, Save the City and Slave the City. This is going to be a game based on the John Carpenter They Live, you know, uh, IP. 
and it's a game that has a, a bit of a hidden trader mechanism going on in it. Past that, I don't have a high level gameplay on it, but it's going to be launching April uh, April 13th, not April 11th, April 13th on this one. Pioneer Rails is going to be launching April 17th, I believe. This is going to be a roll and write game that is in a like a big box uh, version of it or whatnot. Looks cool. I like the art. They're from Janda Games. I like the art. I like the cards. Know nothing about the actual gameplay itself, but everything else looks fairly promising so far. We have over here Kingdoms of Akandia Seven Realms. There's going to be a bunch of April 18th launches. Kingdoms of Akandia Seven Realms is going to be one of them. This is a relaunch. They had this on Kickstarter a while ago. It unfortunately canceled. It didn't, didn't, didn't fully fund or whatnot. And they're relaunching April 18th. I believe this was supposed to launch last month and they got pushed off, so we'll see what happens now. We have Weird World Manor, another April 18th game. This is going to be almost a, a labyrinth style game which you basically have this rotating board and rotating clock and that's going to allow access to different rooms so you have a randomized setup of these rooms in this three-tiered layer system of the board and you're going to be moving your characters from 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 the inner layers to other layers as you try to activate rooms and try to take down all the various um critters whatever they're called the the there's a term for them there's a little Oh my gosh, there's a word for when you have that little Egyptian thing. I'm blanking on the term for these little bug thingies. Hmm, I can't remember the name from. But past that, you'll be fighting against, against asymmetric bosses in this game with asymmetric characters as you try to activate the rooms and take down the little bug thingies that have with scarabs. Scarabs, that's the word I'm looking for. Thank you, scarabs. Scarabs is the word I'm looking for in Weird Word Manor in this cooperative game. From there, we're going to have Teotihuacan Deluxe Edition. Again, another April 18th title. This is going to be the deluxe version of, of Teotihuacan, a game that I own and have not played and really, really, really need to play. There's so many games. Like I feel like I feel like so much of board gaming is just chasing the things you have to justify getting the next thing or or just trying to be on top of things to kind of justify what you're doing. Like, I want to play Teotihuacan just so I can go ahead and, well, you know, I don't know, just so I can... I want to play Teotihuacan. I have wars coming. I want to play Teotihuacan just so I can justify whether I do or don't want to get this game. I don't know if it'll happen. We'll see. Euro games in general, I'm always a little bit behind. They just take longer to get tabled in my group. But uh, I do want to play this one. We'll see what actually happens. I still have time because this is an April 18th title. So that gives me like at least three weeks. Plus, I also have like the actual campaign. So I have like five weeks to play Teotihuacan. That is so easy. I have like nothing on my schedule. We should be fine. Then we have Fighters of Europe. This is going to be a skirmish game with airships. Got another April 18th title. It's going to be launching on Kickstarter. Uh, you're going to have your basically have tons of little like carver tokens of airships as you wander around the board skirmishing and whatnot map navigating no rulers no whatever just pure tactical movement on a hex based system as you figure out what you need to bomb what you need to fight and what you need to move around the board we're going to have seismic a race for survival doing seismic armageddon is it seismic i think it's seismic not seismic seismic a race for survival doing seismic armageddon this is going to be launching april 18th as well i'm pretty sure april 18th and it's going to be a game which you are all these factions trying to build your spaceship to get off the planet and whoever gets your spaceship done first wins in this resource management, a little bit of combat, a little bit of resource management kind of game. And if you're like, why can't you all launch off? It's because your spaceship's thrust and, and rockets are so powerful that you rip the planet apart as you launch. So whoever does it first is the one who wins. Fairly, fairly dark and twisted in what it's doing. But the gameplay itself, the the miniatures, the, the production, everything looks absolutely amazing on this one. Uh, but yeah, this is Seismic launching April 18th. Then we have over here Antares Kingdoms, another April 19th title. April 19th titles Antares Kingdoms. It's a Euro style card game, and I'm curious how this one is because I've actually played this game at a few points in its development, so I don't know where it currently is in development. But this was a game that I enjoyed, but I had criticisms, and I know that they actually pushed off the entire game for like a year and, and rehashed elements of the game, not just for myself, but they, they got like positive, they got mixed feedback of things people liked and things people wanted to see differently, and they just rehashed the game to try to add more of the things people wanted to see. And so I'm curious where it is right now, but this is Antares Kingdom, a deck building game with a degree of like a storyline progression almost as you try to figure out how to build out your tableau not really deck building more more tableau building but yeah either way Antares Kingdoms is going to be well this is going to be Antares Kingdoms from uh, Sand Time Games then over here we have April 25th we have Endeavor Deep Sea after this is when I go back to like a you know again shelf control and stop spending money but Endeavor Deep Sea for, from Age of Gaming I'm curious why Age of Gaming is for this one I don't know what this is this is like Burnt Island Games and Grand Gamers Guild I don't know the whole Age of Gaming thing don't understand that at all but Endeavor Deep Sea a fantastic game I've only played this once I played the original Endeavor a lot and I, I like the original Endeavor a lot and this I only had a chance to play once but based on that one play Play, I thought it was significantly, not significantly, let's just, just be responsible. I thought it was better than Endeavor. It took elements of Endeavor and just made it a better system. I really enjoyed this game. I thought it was really well done. It has a degree of exploration of board management, tableau management, a whole bunch of things you're trying to do as you try to navigate and puzzle out different elements of the game. I really enjoyed this one a lot and I'm looking forward to diving back in. Pun genuinely not intended. As I heard myself saying it, I heard what I was saying, but I am indeed looking forward to diving back into Endeavor Deep Sea. Then on April 25th, we have Guards of Atlantis. This is I'm not actually not actually confident in this one. 
This may or may not be April 25th. I couldn't tell for sure. I think it is, but I'm not certain. But Guards of Atlantis 2, Tabletop MOBA from Wolf Designer. Uh, this is bringing you more Guards of Atlantis to your tabletop. Because, well, Guards of Atlantis, they, they had the original Guards of Atlantis, and they had Guards of Atlantis 2 over on Kickstarter. Now they have Guards of Atlantis 2, Tabletop MOBA with all the expansions. I don't know what they're changing or adding to the game. I don't know. I don't care. All I know is this game is excellent. I really probably should make sure I have review coverage up for this game. I've played this game already. I just have to actually like review it. That's an important part of the conversation. But I probably should review this at some point so I could have that up. But I, I like this. I've talked for this. I did a play this not that once between uh, Rum and Bones and the original Guards of Atlantis and I want to dive heavily into uh, playing and covering and talking about Guards of Atlantis 2 uh, at some point before the campaign. But we got time. We got time. I, I should have to play Tio Turokon first. Then we should be fine. And then from there we have Classic Rally over here. Classic Rally coming. coming. This one I'm not even sure actually. This one might be pushed off. Uh, this is coming officially, technically, possibly in April but it's been pushed off for a while. It was originally supposed to be last year and they just pushed it off. It's going to be a racing game. I didn't heavily look into it because Honestly, it may well be pushed off, and I'm just less excited or knowledgeable as far as how that's going to play out. But that is everything we have in, in April. Well, at least everything is a key word over there, because remember, remind you to subscribe to Shelf Clutter if you want to get the full picture of all the stuff as things are updated, as we get more information. I just cover what I know as of right now, and we have a whole month for things to change, for games to be added, for games to be taken away, and for you to decide where to spend your hard-earned money. And in fact, let's do one more thing, one more thing, one more thing before we go, because I've actually gotten a request to start doing a, a pick of the month, so to speak, when I do these videos. And generally, when I do my two-back or knock-to-back roundups every Monday, I have a, well, I have a pick where I talk about the games that I think are the most, my most, my biggest personal interest and the one that will most likely hold this value. And I've had a few people ask me to start doing that with these videos once a month. So let's go ahead and do that. As far as most likely to hold this value, the easy answer there is Zombicide White Death. That's just a very easy answer. Come on, games hold the value. It also arguably would be my pick, except not really, actually. No, it wouldn't. Very often, come on, games are both. They're both my personal interest pick. I'm a sucker for come on, games. I like their titles, but they also hold the value the most. So sometimes I just say, hey, it would be both, but, you know, I'm just using the value pick and I'll pick something else. In this case, it wouldn't be both. This would absolutely be my value pick of the week as far as the game most likely to hold this value. But as far as my personal interest, we have a bunch of good contenders. Nova Roma is excellent. Project L is incredible. Uh, Mindbug is fun. Zombie with Death is great. Santorini, very excited about this one. It could be a strong contender, but it's still not going to make the cut because ultimately for me, I think Fracture, nope, nope, we're not going to do these. Nope, I'm just gonna, I'm making sure as I go through this that which one is actually. Word of Man is a fun game. Tiro Takan, I need to play. Fighters of Europe, Seismic, I need to play so far still. I think we're going to go with Endeavor Deep Sea as my pick of the month as far as the upcoming games and the one that I'm most personally excited about. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was very... and. It we need more caveats. I'll have review coverage of the game coming up with more opinions, more more depth to why, and again, depth. You see what I did there? The diving, the depth, genuinely not intended. The next one might be intended. I don't know. But uh, this is one that I am very excited to see the C, that one was intended. C, you see, that that one was actually intentional. The other two genuinely weren't, but I kind of thought of that on the fly, and it's like I could throw the word C in there easily. I'm excited to see, uh, I'm excited to see the depth of this game as I continue to dive into it. Oh my dear lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to end the video now. That's too much. I apologize. Have a good one. I'll talk to you later.